Hello, soccer fans, and welcome to our second ever edition of the M2 Review, all things M2 Indoor Soccer, the Major Arena Soccer League 2, kicking off its 2021 season just this past weekend with a very successful Heartland Invitational out in Wichita, and a big announcement just a couple of days ago that the Chicago Mustangs will be returning to the M2 playing field, and Delighted to have as our guest with us uh, this week on the M2 Review, Dr. Sev Reinach, who is one of the major investors of the uh, Mustangs and a guy who has played a big role behind the scenes in uh, in the sport, in a lot of sports, as a matter of fact. Dr. Sev, thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully Dr. Sev is okay from here on out. Ryan, thank you for having me on. That's Sev is fine. That's fine. Thank you. Well, we appreciate your time this afternoon. First of all, let's talk about the Mustangs coming back to M2. Very exciting. Uh, a name that many fans recognize around the sport, obviously, have had great success in the sport. Has to be uh, exciting and gratifying, I'm sure, for you and your group to uh, get the Mustangs back on the field, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, it is. Uh, again, we we believe, I believe we have one of the greatest indoor coaches and outdoors, Armando Gamboa. Uh, he has a great facility uh, outside the Chicago area. His ownership structure has uh, brought soccer back uh, to indoor and outdoor as well. And uh, with the talent that we just have in our local area, we can be very competitive. Yeah, and it's a name that people recognize because they you have had so much success, I think like over 80 wins uh, in the Mustangs history, which goes back uh, not quite a decade now. But uh Give us an idea of what the Mustangs tradition is and, and the type of team and, and organization you want to be going forward. Well, basically, we love the structure that we have. We have an academy where we get the youth in the beginning, uh, all starting at age six, all the way up to 18. Uh, they stay with us in the Chicago Mustangs program. Then we get to cherry pick the, the better players to try to get into the Chicago Mustangs M2, uh, our, our outdoor teams. Uh, the pyramid is pretty successful. It's it's growing uh, to the point that we need probably more coaches to take care of all the different levels of uh, students that are playing uh, indoor soccer, outdoor soccer, the coaching. Uh, and uh, this uh, formula has been very successful before, and I'm glad to become a part of it because soccer is only going to grow. And no question. And you talk about the structure uh, of the Mustangs, but indoor soccer now kind of has a structure that in its 40 plus years of existence in this country, it really has never had. I actually go back. I saw my first professional indoor game, covered my first professional indoor game as a newspaper reporter in 1979, believe it or not. So, yeah, so I go way back really to the beginning days of the sport and have been involved or a fan certainly ever since. And really never has there been the kind of structure in place now with the MASL, M2, M3, uh, PASL structure that really uh, I think bodes great for the future of the sport and really makes so much sense to to grow this sport that we love I know that's been a kind of a vision of yours, a dream of yours, and, and uh, explain why that's important and why it's so exciting to fans of the sport. Well, you should have unification in any sport. It shouldn't be 15 different leagues all over the United States and Canada. Everybody's trying to vie for players, and if somebody's going to offer them a dollar more or whatever they're going to offer them on an amateur level. So by unifying, at least indoor, you know, we have the MASL, which is Division One. Now we have M2, M3. We have the PASL under Kevin Milliken from the amateur level. So now these teams can start from the bottom and work their way up to a professional level, which would be great. Uh, we're also fortunate to have Chris Economides, who has the best experience in outdoor soccer, Andrew Ross, uh, soccer fan from Rochester, uh, Blake Schumacher, who's gonna be running M2 and M3 with us. So we got the right people. They have the right uh, goals in mind. The objectives, the objectives are there in place to unify soccer. We developed this pyramid. And I firmly believe it's going to be very successful going forward. And, and what would you tell potential owners, teams that are interested in M2, M3? What are the keys to really putting together uh, the kind of franchise that the Mustangs has, have been over the year and what Blake has done in Wichita and other places, certainly where they've had success? So what in your mind is one of the investors with the Mustangs and in this sport are the keys really to to having success not only on the field, which of course is important, but uh, you can't you can't win unless you win and off the field too. And and that basically involves getting the community involved. Yes, you're a pro soccer team or amateur soccer team, 
but you have to get the community involved. They have to feel that they're part of the organization, which we do. And the Mustangs are out all over the place and different events all the time, year round. And now with having indoor soccer and outdoor soccer, our brand is 365 days a week. And if you're interested in doing something like this, you start at the grassroots, you start at the M3 level or the PASL level. You learn the, you learn the intricacies of running a business, all right? But you're getting the community involved. Getting the community involved is like number one. The number two, you'll always get players. There's always a players out there that play excellent indoor and outdoor soccer. And you have to learn how to run it. It's still a business. You have to run it as a business. But community involvement is a major factor. And I think between the other teams in the leagues that I've witnessed and watched, communities are involved from A to Z all the time. And that's the that's your formula for success. And how important is it? It seems like it's a growing model when you talk about that that you have both an indoor and an outdoor presence. So you have that kind of year round uh, visibility in the community. Is that kind of part of the Mustang strategy? And would you kind of recommend that to other uh, cities and owners that uh, are, are trying to move forward? Yeah, it should be a strategy. Uh, the model we developed indoor would be a good place to start indoor and then kind of go outdoor. Outdoor is a little bit different way to run your business, but indoor, you know, the weather's always going to be good indoors. You know how much your seating capacity is. So you can kind of control what's going on from a business standpoint, indoor, outdoor. Again, it's finding fields. It's finding uh, arenas that allow uh, sales, uh, different uh, merchandise that allow sales for uh, uh, alcohol for those who want to partake in a beer here that game. That's all part of it also. But uh, Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Okay, that's good to hear. <laughs> but, uh, as most sports facilities have uh, right. re refreshments, I should say. <laughs> but having the community involved uh, is the major factor. And that's what you should strive for. It's not just going out and trying to win a game. And what's also important is the ones that do come into the league understand we're one giant partnership. So we're competing on the, on the turf inside, but outside the game, we're all partners. So we're not competing outside. We're working together to make the brand grow, to make the league grow. And I can see this in about three, four years, having 40, 50 teams at the different levels in the pyramid involved in MASL. Yeah, actually, you just stole my thunder. That was going to be my next question was, what, where do you see, where do you vision, uh, gosh, 40 or 50 teams? That's obviously pretty ambitious. Uh, uh, how do you see getting to that point then? Well, again, if they, all, if they want to learn and start, we're here to help and guide them. All the owners are since we're all partners. And if a team comes in at the N3 level, it's not that they're alone on the island. They can call any owner. They can call any director of operations, general manager. We're here to help guide them. And maybe a year at the M3 level or a year or two at the PASL level, they'll be able to move up and we guide them. Therefore, it guarantees success. They're not left alone in the dark. And as, a, as one major business and all partners, we're here to help. And that'll solidify the league. So I am a firm believer in this model. I tried to do this model in, in basketball a few years ago. Uh, it can be successful. Again, it depends on the ownership. The uh, well, yeah, the Rochester Razor Sharks certainly had a lot of success uh, yeah. under your tutelage uh, up in upstate New York. I'm a Buffalo mo boy myself, so uh, appreciate uh, the fact that uh, a lot of those teams up there in Rochester, of course, Chris Konamides knows right. a thing or two about having success in Rochester yeah. uh, as well. And I think it should be pointed out and, and commended to, to you uh, personally and others around them too who have invested in this sport during this pandemic because it's not uh you probably don't have a business you know your your uh, cpa is probably not telling you it's the the best way you can spend money right now but the reality is uh, the show goes on the sport survives and and people like you really have made that happen for this 2021 season uh and stepping forward just how important has that been overall in your mind, just to keep the sport viable and in the in the spotlight, if you will. Another ingredient is uh, again, if you can bring a lot of money, but you got to bring a little bit of love and respect for the sport <laughs> to know what you're doing here. So that's part of it. Otherwise, none of us would be involved in it if we didn't have an appreciation for for soccer. But the pandemic, with that challenge, um, it, it obviously has been great for so many teams. And I think uh, the fact that uh, so many people are involved, still trying to make it work and and find a way forward to uh, lay that foundation for, as you said, those 40 or 50 teams, maybe in a few years. Um, that doesn't happen without the commitment of some of those people like you this year. So um, on my on my behalf and on the fans' behalf, I want to extend a thanks to, no, to you, 
Patrick. My please, my pleasure to get involved. I enjoy it thoroughly, 100. percent Well, it doesn't happen without folks like you, and we really uh, do want to extend our appreciation and thanks. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing the Mustangs on the field again, uh, hopefully this spring. Right? Uh, you're gonna try game them inside and outside. <laughs> so, uh, well, if the, I know the Chicago weather uh, inside for the next few months, hopefully. And yeah, then, how about June, uh, July? Then we'll be outside. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a great plan. And uh, again, it's so exciting to have the Mustangs back as part of the indoor soccer scene. You belong. There's a great amateur history in that city of uh, probably the best indoor amateur leagues in the whole country come out of Chicago. So, uh, really? yeah, to have to have the Mustangs back and as part of of the uh, Major Arena Soccer League Pyramid now. It's very exciting. So on behalf of uh, Armando and myself, we're very excited and glad to be back, and we know it's going to be successful. Well, we appreciate you, you uh, taking that leap, and Armando as well, and I'm sure we'll check in with you when we get closer to uh, some of your games, and maybe we can talk to Coach Armando and talk about the Mustangs on the field and see how they're going to look here in 2021. So, sure. Dr. Stab, thank you so much, and M2 fans, thank you for joining us on our first ever edition of the M2 Review. We will be back with a new podcast next Thursday. We will be talking about the Rocky Mountain Invitational, the next games on the schedule in M2. Those are February 6th and 7th out in Colorado, and it should be just as good as what we saw in Wichita this past weekend. So until then, stay safe and have a great week, everybody. Thank you, Brian.